welcome in Joe Micheletti. Joe, welcome. How are you? Uh, doing well, Mike. Thanks. All right, Joe, what do you take from the first two games? Uh, well, I think what was unusual uh, when you just look at uh, them losing those two games is uh, is Henrik Lundqvist. Uh, wasn't as sharp as we've seen him. And uh, and to me, it's very seldom uh, that you see another goaltender outplay Henrik Lundqvist in the, in the first two games. I thought he was actually pretty good that first game. I mean, in, in particular in the overtime when he faced the 16 shots. But that's what, uh, what stands out uh, was uh, he had a tough time in game number two. And I thought... The Rangers in the second game had plenty of scoring chances. Uh, Tuka Rask, the goaltender for Boston, was very good. But the defensive mistakes the Rangers made in that game are something that uh, I think most people are not used to. Generally, they're a very solid defensive team that uh, that don't allow teams to score around the front of the net, and uh, and Boston did in that in that game. So it was a little surprising to see the Rangers make the defensive mistakes that they made. But they're playing against a team that's won a championship a couple of years ago, and they're big and they like to go to the net and I think that's something that you and I discussed uh, prior to the series starting and, and they will continue to do that so uh, those were the things that stood out to me. Joe the thing that I that surprised me about them from everything I heard uh, was they were a more team than I thought they would be they were a beautiful passing team in these first couple of games they they really passed the puck well. It's are you talking about the Rangers? No, the Boston? Bruins. The Bruins. Oh, no, the Bruins. The I mean, Bruins. I didn't realize they could pass. I mean, I thought of them as being kind of a gritty, big team that was had some size. But, I mean, their their ability to move the puck and, and, to, and to pass was really tremendous in the first two games. I think a, a couple of things stood out, Mike. Uh, basically the same team that won the Cup when they had four lines that could all score and, and defend well and uh, and did it without needing a power play. And so if your power play is not working, but if you can score at even strength, and then uh, it, it takes the pressure off your power play, and uh, you don't need it quite as much. With the Bruins this season, that is something that they had been waiting for most of the season. And if you go back two years ago, they had a line with David Krejci as the center, with Milan Lucic and Nathan Horton as uh, a, just a dominant line when they won the Stanley Cup. That was a line that hasn't done anything almost since they won the Stanley Cup, but now they're back together. Uh, Lucic is uh, is a dominant player. Krejci leading the playoffs and scoring now. And Nathan Horton is having a very good uh, series as well. So they've been uh, the best line in the playoffs this year for any team. So they've got that going, and then you add, that, add to that uh, – uh, Patrice Bergeron, uh, his line is going. Now you've got two lines that uh, that are a threat, and two other lines that can check and are chipping in a goal every now and then. So, uh, and then I think the other thing, Mike, is that they've used these three rookie defensemen because of injuries on defense, and in particular uh, the young Krug kid on defense that has a goal in each of the first two games, Tory Krug, that no one knew about, has been very good offensively and can move the puck and can skate the puck out of the zone. So, uh, so. This is a team that they always felt, the Bruins did, that it was uh, a team that could score. But they just didn't see much of it in the regular season, but they're seeing more of it now. So how do the Rangers, talking with Joe Micheletti, of combat the fact that the Bruins have had so much room to operate in the offensive zone? They've gotten across the blue line unmolested. They've had so much open area to to really run their offense in the offensive zone. I've been surprised that it just looks like they just can do whatever they want. I mean, they look like they have a lot of freedom on the ice. Yeah, well, I think that, uh, again, what we saw in game number two defensively, I think the Rangers will be much better. I mean, they're 3-0 and on home ice in the in the playoffs, and they've only allowed six goals. I think they'll get back to that. It will be more difficult for those rookie defensemen if all three are in the lineup. We don't know if Dennis Seidenberg is going to play yet tonight for Boston on defense or not, or Wade Redden for that matter. And so those rookie defensemen will feel more pressure uh, coming into Madison Square Garden and have to uh, try to perform. The Rangers, I think they always forecheck a little bit more. You know, with the Rangers, what, what their game plan is, partially to def- their defending style is keeping the puck in the other zone and getting their forecheck going and pinning teams in their own zone. That's one thing that I think they'll need to be a little bit more consistent with, even though I thought, again, in game two, they created some pretty good scoring chances uh, off of that, and Tuka Rask was very good. So I, th- I think overall for the Rangers to combat that style, they're going to have to play physical. They're going to have to get the puck and keep it in the Boston zone and have some sustained pressure. 
And then I think overall as a group defensively in their own zone, they're going to have to clean that up. And, of course, Henrik Lundqvist is uh, – and I expect him to be better than he was in game five – or game uh, two, pardon me, and probably will be.